are we now? We are in Koh Samui, Thailand. Still in, still in Thailand. Same place as last week. But now Kimana finishes his teaching events and now we are in different um, venue. It's a simple uh, bungalows. More my style, relaxing on the side of the mountain. Amazing <laughs> nature with the budget bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> So today, what are we going to talk about, Kimana? Today we're talking about fats, the truth about fats. We are a good representation for this topic. Can you see how fatty we are? Yeah. <laughs> First, we're going to talk about what are fats. What are fats? So, um, from the chemistry perspective, they come under the family of lipids. And these lipids are oily, fatty, greasy type substances that dislike water. Uh, inside the body, we have a few major fats that we use and we classify them into saturated fats and unsaturated fats. The saturated fats are more solid at room temperature, so they're not liquid and falling apart at room temperature. And the unsaturated fats are the ones that are more liquid at room temperature. Inside our body, we use them for two main things. For tissues, we make body parts out of these fats, whether it's the brain, the nervous system, um, or insulation to keep us warm, so, surrounding. Second, talking about tissue, because in Indonesia, tissue is like, you know, toilet paper, tissue. When I first learned about health matters like this, and then there's so many words of tissue, and I'm like, Tissue in our body. Why do they call it tissue? What is tissue? Tissue is all of the parts that the body is made up of. From okay. fluids to blood to fats to muscles to proteins. So all of it is the tissue of the body. Okay. The physical parts of the body. Cool. So inside our body, fats make up part of these physical parts. These fats and oils get made into your brain and nervous system, made around the cell walls of each cell to protect and insulate. And they also work as transporters. So these tissues, they transport things across from the outside of a cell membrane to the inside of a cell membrane is transported through these fats and protein layers around you the cell. You can tell how geeky Kimana is by the terminology that he yeah. used. <laughs> and then they are also used for our energy and our metabolism. So not only do they make up the tissues, the building blocks of our body, but they're also how we burn energy, how we use and create glucose and create all of this movement and everything. We can use them for our metabolism inside the system. So this is mainly what fats are. From the modern... From the modern perspective. We'll also look a little bit at the Ayurvedic perspective. In Ayurveda, we look at the five elements as like the kindergarten, understanding nutrition, and we've got ether, air, fire, water, and earth. These are the five elements of Ayurveda. Yeah. And with these five elements, every subject in life could be looked at. So we're looking at nutrition at the moment, and we'll look at them as categories of nutrition. So ether is more fasting, space between the meals. Air is more freshness, fibers, leafy greens. Fire is the spices, the warming, ginger, cardamom, fennel. Water is carbohydrates and fats. So these fats and oils come under the water element, and earth element is protein. So this water element, again, is about transportation and carrying things through the body, yet it's also our chemical energy source. It's how we store the body's resources as chemical energy, both sugars, carbohydrates, and glucose, water element, or fats and oils, yeah, you know, as fat and oil inside the body is our stored water element for Why? nutrition and chemical Sorry. energy. Why fats come under water element? Because the water element in Ayurveda is not necessarily water like our water, it's the liquid spectrum of life. So the fats and oils come under the liquid spectrum of life. Okay. And then when you say about this, these five elements, I believe as a tridoshic human being, a five elements human being, we need all five. We need all five of these in everyone's diet. We need some fasting, some freshness, fibers, leafy greens, some warming spices. We need oils and f carbohydrates, and we need proteins. These make up okay. a balance. So diet. in summary, the water element nutrition is carbohydrates. And fats and oils. And fats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so these five elements then, of course, e because everyone is unique and different, um, there will be a different kind of 
percentage between one and another who need what more than the other? A different percentage between which element is needed more and also different types of fasting, different types of fibres and freshness, different types of warming things could be individualised as well. Okay. Just as different fats and oils we'll be looking at in this class. Okay. Uh, briefly, we know it's not on the outline, <laughs> briefly. Uh, so, uh, will it be right then, uh, because kapha, water is the element of more pita and kapha, so it's more, vata needs more of this than the others. Can you generalize it like that? Vata needs more carbohydrates and fats than the other doshas. Yes, yeah. generally, vata needs more carbohydrates and fats than the other okay. doshas. Yep. If you are new to the concept of dosha, vata, pita, kapha, or you're wondering what is your, um, what is that, uh, dominant constitution, you can download our um, Ayurvedic dosha quiz that Kimana made on Balance triple w dot balance life dot id. You can just download it there. Next point is the myths about fats. The myths about fats. Yeah. So. so, so, so Zia had a little look at what are the most common misconceptions around fats, and the first one is that fats are bad and need to be avoided to lose weight. So there's a few things to be aware of in relation to fats, good, bad. It, it really depends on the nature of the person and how much of a challenging fat they take before it becomes too much for the system. But you can definitely lose weight eating a high fat diet. That is a total myth. You don't need to cut out fats to lose weight. In fact, on one of our Ayurvedic detoxes, I've been feeding someone ghee, saturated fat, every day, tablespoons in the morning, and they still lost six kilograms over just a seven day detox period. So that's eating and having ghee, and still they would lose weight during that time. So really it's about what are the fats? Are they easy to digest? Do they get stuck in certain systems of the body? So we've got to look at which fats get stuck the easiest, and which ones can move through the system the easiest. So it's not about fat in general, but the right type of fats. Right type of fats. And we've been told that, oh, it's the unsaturated fats, and then we've made saturated fats vilified, and then we've told it's omega-3 fatty acids from fish, and really it's about having a good variety of many different fats and using them in rotation to get a right balance in the body and not excess of one type of fat for too long. Okay. The next myth is fats are the cause of high cholesterol. Um, this is a big one to unpack in a small amount, so I'm going to do my best. Cholesterol is a protective mechanism in the body. A certain amount of cholesterol is needed to protect the arteries, to make our hormones and enzymes, and many things are used with cholesterol as a building block for that. So if we have inflammation in the body, then the body naturally produces more cholesterol. It protects the arteries. What yeah. is inflammation? Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This is a big topic. We <laughs> want to go into this one. Inflammation is the body's healing mechanism. It's how the body heals itself when there is damaged tissues. So if skin is damaged or the inside of an artery is damaged, then it will tend to inflame immune system activity, fluid bringing into the area so that it can heal easier. If that inflammation happens in an artery inside the blood, then it will also bring in cholesterol. Mm. Yeah, if the artery is getting damaged, it's inflamed, immune system activity, and it will bring in cholesterol to sort of tape up the walls of the artery so that it can protect them. Uh, this temporarily? Is temporarily, ah, and so then it will dissolve and eat that ah, cholesterol okay. again later on. If there's way too much cholesterol, this can be a problem. It can block an artery and create damage, but cholesterol being just from fats? No, it's about, again, the harder to digest fats that block and damage the arteries. The ones that are more inflammatory and heating, such as fried oils, definitely. Fried food going on. Fried <laughs> foods are going to be one of the hardest to digest fats that you can get. Okay. Here we're live and we're getting some live rain <laughs> happening right now in Thailand. <laughs> so that's the second myth, which is um, fat is not not oh. the, always the cause of high cholesterol. Most of the time it is inflammation. You know, it's systemic inflammation throughout the body caused by many different things from sugars to uh, pollutants to 
bad fats, fried fats, uh, these will be much more likely to cause the inflammation. Okay. Yeah. Which is, cholesterol. that's then, let's say in Indonesia, it's a common myth that fat, uh, fat causes cholesterol because when we say fat, we, you know, most of our food are fried. The fats that are used oil. commonly in Indonesia are palm fried oil. oils and palm oil. It's generally older, more rancid fats. Okay. Yeah. Myth number three. Saturated fats increase the risk of heart disease. Uh, again, these saturated fats have shown now in certain research that a good amount of saturated fats can be beneficial for the heart. As long as they soothe the arteries, these saturated fats, things like coconut oil, ghee, you know, decrease inflammation throughout the system and are easily digestible so they don't get blocked and stuck inside the tissues. Okay. What do you think, talking about heart disease, um, when you correlate that with Ayurveda, that's a common, uh, sorry, a dominant pitta issue? It depends on the way in which heart disease is presenting. If it's very thick blood that is blocking, that is more of a kapha. Ah. If it's a driven nature, going for goals, intensity, that's more pitta. Okay, yeah. so in this case, the heart disease that is caused by... Um, a block artery is more the cuff ah, yeah. okay yeah okay cool We're looking at some great fat sources. If you want to get good amounts of fats in the diet, they're very important because it's the way in which the body transports and makes the tissues. We all need fats as part of our diet. Some scientists believe that it's our high amount of fats in the diet of humans that increased such a large brain size. We have the largest percentage of brain weight compared to our body weight out of any species on That's the planet. We eat more fats. Many scientists believe it's because we ate a high amount of fats in our diet that we were enabled to build a very large brain size. Okay. Yeah. Before we talk about the good fat research, can you mention more about the bad fat research? I would say the, the sort of biggest it. challenge with fats is that they tend to denature over time. They become harder for us to digest, more likely to block in the system the longer that they've been around for. So if a fat is cold pressed, that's what we want, the best quality is always cold pressed, then it only has a certain period of time and it's different for every fat or oil before it's no longer going to digest easily and get blocked in your system more. So the fresher the better, the closer to cold pressed the better. If it's heat extracted, then it's much more likely to block in the system, much more likely to create heat in the liver and the gallbladder to challenge the eyes, the fluids, the circulation, more likely to create inflammation. Okay. So what's the good fat sources? I would say cold pressed seeds are my favorite fat sources. So just going into so many varieties of cold pressed seeds from sesame to sunflower. I just, we just had chia seed, oh, cold so pressed delicious. chia seed when we were in Germany recently. So, so many varieties of cold pressed seeds that are great for that. And then I think organic butter is a fairly good source of fats and oils that our body can easily use if you can digest dairy well. Uh, avocado, another great fat source readily available in parts of the world. Coconut oil is quite a big one at the moment. Everyone's loving coconut oil, a saturated fat and wonderful for the body, yet uh, it's not an everyday oil for all people. It's something where we need to rotate with all oils. Coconut oil, its Ayurvedic qualities are cooling and heavy. And when we get these two qualities together, cool and heavy, we often can't eat that every day. Otherwise, it tends to block inside the system as Talking well. Talking about um, that, that coconut oil is cooling and heavy. Um, and then it's naturally, what is that? Rice, not a rice. <laughs> That's the word. Naturally comes in a tropical Naturally comes climate. in a tropic, because yeah. um, Ayurveda is also big on eating locally, right? Yeah. So, you know, the uh, coconut oil would be more suited, suited to it. a tropical climate more of the time. You could have a larger amount of it there. Yet still, I would say rotate through seeds, cold pressed mm -hmm. seeds. Yeah, um, little bits of other fats and oil sources as well in those. What climates. would be the worst case scenario? Because now everyone is like coconut oil everywhere and then they import it what would be the worst case scenario for people who
Anyhow. So when it comes to detox, Ayurveda thinks fats are a must. If you are detoxifying the body, they love to fill the body with fats because our toxins are often stored in the fats of the body. And we release those toxins into the fluids, the blood, and other areas. And if there's not a lot of fat in the body, there's not something to catch the toxin and coat it and protect it. Otherwise, those toxins are moving through the body. They create more inflammation. They touch and damage tissues as they move through as well. Whereas an Ayurvedic detox, we flood the body with fat. We drink in ghee in the morning, specific medicated amounts for each person to be able to pull all the toxins and the doshas towards the liver. And then we purge them out. We use specific substances to open up the liver and the gallbladder and flush these toxins out of the body. So now because everyone, not everyone, around the world people are doing this ketogenic diet can you talk a little bit more about that because they're also high on what fats what's yeah. different with ayurvedic fats? so the ketogenic diet is is very talked about around the world at the moment it's basically a low carbohydrate diet where we put the body into what's known as ketosis using fats for fuel as the dominant source and allowing those fats for fuel to start burning through our own fat resources, often used for weight loss. So even though we can eat lots of fats on a ketogenic diet, or what might have once been called an Atkins diet, um, that high fat diet does not build into body tissue because we're constantly using the fats for fuel with no carbohydrate. They are the chemical energy source of the water element that we talked about before in Ayurveda. So this type of diet can be great for weight loss. In Ayurveda, we look at it more in balance. It's going to be the peak winter to like spring period. It's to clean out carbohydrate, clean out dampness, clean out water element after the end of the winter where that water element is cool during the winter. We build up excess resources except dampness, heaviness, and then we release it and we let go of that. We reduce the carbohydrates for that peak winter to spring period and cleanse out. And then what's, is there any side effects that might happen if you don't do it during this high winter? If you're doing it at any time of the year, let's, it puts stress on the kidneys. These okay. ketones need to leave the body through the kidneys. And if we have... Why kidney? Because the liver is the fat. The liver what processes the, the fats and a byproduct of that production is called ketones. They're a ah. chemical, and that chemical goes back into the blood again. You know, these ketones, ketogenic diet, the body is in ketosis. And, okay. and then those ketones, when they leave the body, go out through the kidneys. So you test someone, are they in ketosis, by doing a urine test, and you'll see those ketones coming out through the urine at that ah, time. Okay. So the puts a lot of pressure on the kidneys to get rid of those ketones out through the kidneys like that. There's Ayurvedic ideal of different progression that we would look at as we go through um, the year. They would always use a fairly high fat diet throughout the whole year in Ayurveda. It's just that it would be the light fats would be ideal for this ketogenic type diet, clearing out the fat element. So olive oil, a fairly light type fat, you know. Uh, and then as we moved into like autumn to winter, or other time, this is the vata time of the year. This is carbohydrates, proteins, and more of the heavy and warm fats. Animal fats would be more suitable. Mm. A little bit of palm oil at this time of the year would even be fine. Oh, really? Even yeah, it's, it's warm and heavy fat. Yeah, okay. It's in that same direction. And it will when you say palm oil, does it needs to also be cold press it would be good quality as close okay. to fresh as possible okay. not in a plastic container <laughs> five liter with a year use by date on it cool. um, and, and then we go into the summer hotter time of the year again this is fats but it's the cooling fats like the coconut oil that we just talked about before ghee is also a cooling fat sunflower oil so high fat all of the year when it comes to ayurveda Yet in an Ayurvedic detox, like a Panchakarma or something, what we're doing is regulating that ratio of putting the body into ketosis. Lots of fats in the morning trigger this ketosis and then giving little bits of kitchari a meal which has a tiny bit of carbohydrates 
the protein that the body needs in the legumes and just small enough that we can gauge how much ketosis do we want you know how much do we want the body to start burning through its own fats and chewing through and how much do we need a little bit of carbohydrate as well we shouldn't go without carbohydrates all the year for all people mm. carbohydrates would be included in ayurveda especially the autumn to peak winter and the summer period they Especially would use carbohydrates. Especially for Asians who yeah. are born with a bowl of rice in their hands. Well, that's the summer <laughs> climate there, so that is more suited to carbohydrates. Yeah, In some degree, if you went through ketosis in a tropical or summer-type climate, it could be more challenging on the kidneys in that environment. Okay. the uh, good source of oil and fats for each individual dosha because I believe there will be a little difference. Each dosha could benefit from different oils, but more than that, I would say rotate. Don't okay. get stuck on your individual dosha because you are not just one dosha. We all need a little bit of all of the oils over our year. Even if you're in the tropics and you don't seasonally change, don't get stuck on one oil. Um, if we went for doshas though, Vata does well with warming and heavier oils, so sesame oil, almond oil, some of the nut oils, um, ghee and butter would also be in there, even though it's cooling ghee, it's still in this heavy, nourishing, lubricating. Pitta is going to do better with the cooling oils, so sunflower oil, coconut oil, olive oil will come under that category. Pitta also likes a bit of a, a lighter, easier to digest oil, because um, it tends to get stuck with heating stagnant oils and kapha wants the lightest of oil oils the minimal oil that we can have is kapha we probably again going olive oil little bits of sesame are fine mustard seed mustard seed oil you can use it's very warm i'd prefer to use it for massage oh, and no, take it so internally just, oh, yeah. okay. because it's too warming I, I've never tried it internally. You'd have, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Yeah, okay. And to use mustard seed oil on the outside of the body as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. So... For kapha. For kapha. Yes. Whether the five elements of Ayurveda is similar with the five elements of um, Chinese medicine? They're similar in the sense that they're both five element metaphors to understand the greater world around us that also connect us to the world within us. So there's five elements that are inside the body and five elements that are in the world and they can be used to understand many subjects of life. But the elements are different. The metaphor is different. In Chinese medicine, they have wood and metal, um, metal which they don't have those in the Ayurvedic system. They're different metaphors. Do they have its own strength that is different with Ayurveda? They do. They're both beautiful systems. I would say the strength of Chinese medicine is in the subtle energy body. The metaphor suits understanding and treating the subtle energy body. The strength of the Ayurvedic system is its applicableness to all subjects of life. Yeah. Okay. So Kimana will be teaching in four days time, five days time in Bali with Gwyn Williams. He's a great um, Zen Tai Siachu teacher from Australia. And then he will be teaching Ayurveda in relation to uh, Zen Tai Shiatsu, which the school is using uh, Chinese, Chinese medicine. medicine. So Ayurveda and Chinese medicine together for 10 days with Gwyn. Cool. Next question. I'm on keto diet, high fat in order to train in the body to use fat as energy. I'm also concerned about my pH balance. Can you comment on keto diet? How much is too much? Is That's the first question first. Yeah. So uh, the first question, in, like how much is too much? Mm. Yeah, it, It's really hard to say. It all depends on the strength of your kidneys. I personally wouldn't put the body into ketosis, full ketosis, for longer than two, two, two weeks to a month. I think that a more balanced diet is needed most of the time. If there is strong imbalances in the pH that are also happening, your own body's pH, sometimes it can go acidic quite easily with a ketogenic diet, um, then I would just move the ketogenic diet to a very vegetable dominant one and you can still alkalize the body even during ketosis by just eating less meat. Okay. Mm. Then the second question he asks, is fat is acidic? Is fat acidic? No, it depends on the fat. Okay. Mm. Next question. Uh, do you have anything you want to add? 
Oh, if we went into detail on depends on the fat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, too many fats to too list. Yeah. A little summary on the truth about fats. So there's a little one. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Knowledge, happy to share. <laughs> so the it. summary is fats are amazing. Everyone needs them. Rotate through cold pressed seed oils to really get a good amount for the body. And um, if you're interested to see us in the future, we're running a Vitality Now Ayurvedic cleanse where we flood the body with fats to pull out the toxins from the body. If you're interested, it's September 22nd to the 29th in Australia. It'll be the last one with my family in Australia. If you would like to know more detail about that, please go to www.balancelife.id for joining us tonight. It's been really great um, to share again here in Thailand in this, our little small simple bungalows. <laughs> yep, great to share with you all. Look Talk forward to, to seeing you again soon. Talk to you next week at the same time. Bye! Bye!